Thank you, Chris. Hello, everyone. Hello, let me set up this. So, uh, my name is Rafael. I'm part of the jQuery team. And I'm really thrilled uh, to be here today and be able to present to you the recent work we've been doing on Globalize for the past months. Uh, basically, we believe the globalization libraries for JS could be improved in so many ways. But before getting into that, let me make a quick intro. Uh, Globalize was created back in 2010, and it's used by ourselves on jQuery UI, like on this uh, fancy spinner, time spinner example. Globalize is used here to format date instances into human uh, readable strings and to parse the input back into the instances again. This example is interesting uh, because it, we, we tend to think globalization libraries are only used when uh, we need different languages other than English. But sometimes we don't realize uh, we need, we use it to localize computer to human and vice versa in user interfaces. Now, if your product or service reaches a global market, first, you may need to deal with other languages. Why? Although we all know English is the most spoken language in the world today, Two-thirds of world economy comes from English-spoken places. We have basically the same thing for academic publications and the same for internet usage. And to deal with other languages means to deal with their regional differences. Uh, we be and believe me, they are a bunch. We can see part of that on our calendar widget, data picker, and just check what happens uh, when I change locales here. Oh, sorry about that uh, message. Well, of course the names of months and days are all translated accordingly, like we have fevereiro, segunda, terça, and uh, also alphabet may change. Uh, text direction may change, like from left to right to right to left. Calendar preferences, like what's the first day of the week? Is it Monday? Is it Sunday? Like weekend days, is it Saturday and Sunday? They're all different on, on different countries. We go crazy. And here we are only looking at the Gregorian calendar. But no panic. We have a list of JS libraries to help us out, remember? Yeah, but like I said before, we think they could be improved. So let's start by talking about the improvements we could do on our own project. Uh, these are all of our bugs, and 28% of the bugs are related to locale content. What locale, you may be wondering, yeah? Uh, when this project was created, to get itself off the ground, we started by importing existing locale data. And for historical reasons, we imported .NET locale. And we embedded this data into the library. So back to the chart, now showing uh, the three different types of locale bugs we had. The least frequent one was coverage. Actually, we had uh, one single issue about it. And I gotta say, like Globalize uh, from the beginning had a pretty much a bunch of locales. We've never had a report saying, hey, I don't see my language in here. Although we did have one single issue saying that the person uh, locale was completely misleading. But anyway, that was one single issue and perhaps Globalize didn't reach enough markets. Perhaps initial coverage was pretty good enough. Back to the bugs. The next group of bugs are related to functionality. 
And this were complicated uh, because fixing the locale content wasn't enough. They also required structural changes. For example, wrong currency for Estonian culture. As of January 1st, 2011, uh, Estonia uses euro. And this example is really tricky because it happens that .NET defines one currency per locale. So even if we fix the database and update the currency for, uh, from Estonian Kroon to euro, you would lose history. For example, say we have a list of transactions of these two months, and the column of the left represents the data on our server of this hypothetical example, where we store a date, a currency, and a decimal value for each transaction. On the middle column, which represents the before the change, our application would know what symbol to use for Estonian Kroon, but not for Euro. And on the right column, after the change, it would know what symbol to use for Euro, but not for Estonian Kroon anymore. But moving on to another example, this guy wanted to add relative uh, time format, like five minutes ago for past time and in three years for future time. But that would require us to create a new format pattern. See the X uh, he suggested for this new ad hoc pattern. And we would also need to fill this new content on every locale we supported. Anyway, we had more issues of this kind, and basically to fix them all, we would have to do two things. Change the locale structure, know what, to, what, what content to, to use to fill them all. But the really astonishing amount of issues we had was asking us to fix locale data, diverse small fixes. We had issues for Albanian, for Polish, Japanese calendar, uh, Polish again, Swedish, uh, Indian English, and it was a bunch, as you can see. And reviewing locale fixes is something that is not that easy. The team really tried their best, and occasionally they used Google Translate to help them out. But localization is not simply translation. Uh, it's a bunch more than that. As an example, you can see here all the sources that Richard, Richard had to research in order to assist with this fix. And even if we were fine, that was an easy task. We still had a, uh, the trouble to keep in sync with .NET updates. And by that time, the team realized it didn't make sense to maintain our own locale database. There should be a better way. Back in late 2012, CLDR was our best source to reveal those fixes. So, uh, Jorn Zephyr has suggested a new approach to get us out of this hole. So, evaluate CLDR as a database or a common locale data registry. It's a Unicode.org project used by many big brands. It has a lot of locale information, like formatting and parsing, translation of names, language and script information, country information. It basically had everything we need. So how it would help us? By adopting CLDR, we would be able to improve our locale coverage from former 350 to 740. By adopting it, we would be able to uh, fix all the issues we had so far. And also, most importantly, switching to CLDR uh, would, would allow us to outsource any content fixes to Unicode.org. It's an active project. It's open source, so anyone can submit data to it. And there is a consortium of experts that could reveal all that. So isn't that amazing? Uh, but that's not all. 
we can embed CLDR data into our code again, or we will keep maintaining it as we've been done before. And we can't simply switch uh, to CLDR without redesigning the way data is loaded. We believe libraries should not mandate on how users load this in their apps. It's like you should do it in your way. Users have different needs. They have different preferences. Also, by avoiding to embed content, we can share the same data across multiple libraries. That means in your app, uh, you load it once. You can use the same data for every different internationalization library you use. So instead of embedding CLDR content into our library, let's live independently. Globalize, <clears throat> excuse me. Globalize the internationalization library maintained by us who makes JS code. CLDR is the content maintained by Unicode.org that distributes JSON data. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> You may, but, but that's not all. You may be wondering, don't libraries do this already? Okay, the short answer is no, uh, because CLDR did not serve JSON data until like eight months ago, but LDMR, LDML, which uh, is a, an XML format, which to be used would require a mapping step, and you know the whole story. And these guys from left to right, Mark Davis, the co-founder and president of Unicode.org, John Amons, globalization architect uh, from IBM, and Shen Jing Li, a Google software engineer, they worked together and they finally officialized the G uh, CLDR JSON bindings. Uh, do you wanna see how this looks like? It's something like this. This is the tree we have to navigate to access the translation for the name of the first month in English, also known as January. This is the Estonian tree to find what symbols to use for different uh, currencies, including euro. Let me roll this out. Including Estonian kroon, including euro. So now we are good. So welcome to the new Globalize. It's designed to work both in the browser and in Node.js. We are able to load only the piece that we need. So on date model, we find the uh, date formatting and parsing. On number model, we find number formatting and parsing, and so on. Every JS we distribute is universal model return exports wrapped. So yes, you can load it using AMD, you can load it using CommonJS, or the plain script tags. This is an example of using script tags, an example of using require.js on your browser, and Bower to install it. And this on Node.js, using npm to install it. And we don't include CLDR data in our repo, as you know, but our goal is to make as easy as possible for users to load this and use it. You can fetch the CLDR JSON uh, package from Unicode and unzip it and you're ready to go. You can use the load method uh, and pass this JSON content, uh, so you're free to do it the way you want. Note that you can pass the JSON uh, sorry, note that you don't need to, to, uh, to load the whole, the entire uh, CLDR in your app. Uh, you're, you can load only the content that you need. You can embed it statically, like it, uh, uh, I'm doing in this example, but you can also load it using jQuery Ajax, for example. Note, uh, note the jQuery get calls or you can do it by using AMD plugins, note the JSON plugin, or you can do it by using the require on Node.js, note that require loads each file, or you can do it the way you want. 
And which CLDR parts do I need to load to get it working? Uh, that's a good question. You should find information on our docs. CLDR has uh, several, a lot of different files, but that you should find documentation. And now this is a second piece of info that is really important. Although you can use the vanilla data from CLDR servers, you don't need to stick to it. Let's say you tweaked your Locale data, or you simply don't want to wait for a uh, fix to, to be upstream. Feel free to, to fix it locally in your application, have it working right ahead. As long as it follows the Unicode technical standards, we strictly follow this new, th these specs in, this, in our new rewrite. So what changed for date format in Globalize? Now we can use CLDR patterns. So this is really great. We have a bunch of different uh, patterns to use. We can use the skeletons preset. We can use the short, medium, full, and uh, long presets for date, time, and date time. Or if, us, or if for some reason you need to, you can use the actual pattern. And the skeletons are the default because they are awesome. Uh, you can cherry pick uh, the fields you need in, oh, pardon. Uh, well, note, uh, I have two examples here. Uh, note how nice skeletons are, so you can get the output you want. Like in this example, we have our minutes and, and uh, seconds, and suppose I wanna add the day of the week, so I just include the E, which is the pattern for the day of the week. And note the changes on, on different locales. Like for English, it adds the, the Thursday. But note for Arabic, it adds a thing on the end. So it's really nice because you, you can uh, pick the fields you need and letting the locale to place them in the right order for you. And they, uh, for par the parsing updates are pretty much similar to the, to the format. The number formatting are also going to follow the CLDR. We are working on that right now. And CLDR is a pretty complex and extensive database. It has so many rules. It has multiple inheritance in so many things. And to abstract part of that, uh, so we can have uh, globalized focused on the internationalization functions, and we chose to to move the CLDR code away into a separate library, CLDRJS. It's a low-level library whose only purpose is to help to manipulate CLDR. So it's really cool to develop globalized, not needing to worry about that. And like Globalize, it's designed to work both in the browser or Node.js supports AMD or CommonJS. And it also allows you to load the CLDR data the same way as we've seen before. In fact, Globalize load proxies this method. This is a quick example of things this library help us out. Uh, here's a table of different attributes you get when you instantiate each of these locales. Uh, there are algorithms specified uh, by CLDR to deduce these variables. Note when you instantiate English, language ID is in English. When you instantiate English US, it's smart enough to know that a language ID should be English. And this used when you traverse the trees so it has convenient methods tr to traverse the trees. It has convenient methods that help to avoid having boilerplate codes. Like this is something that would be repeated all over the place in Globalize, if, but using these convenient helpers, uh, it makes the code really smaller. And right now we have collaboration work going on with Wikipedia and with an amazing uh, library that helps manipulate in time, which Moment.js. 
well. Both libraries, Globalize and CLDR, they are working, they are functioning. Like these examples that I showed you, uh, you can try it yourself and it works. But those are all alpha libraries. So use it, file bugs. If you find any trouble, it will be a pleasure to help. Uh, we really pay attention to, to what you say. And we actually need you to help us design, to help us implement, to help us test it. And if you find any bugs on the local data, we will guide you out on, to, to unicode.org uh, how you should submit those problems you have. And I'm really, I'm really excited. I'm really confident this will be a, uh, a nice future, nice, brilliant future for, for globalization libraries. And be part of it. Thank you.